Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about why I love Spider inside of Python here. Uh, so first off here, it looks like our studio, which many people have mentioned. It also looks like SAS. Um, it looks like programming languages that were made to build models here. So if you look at Spider itself, um, Spider stands for the Scientific Python Development Environment. That is what we are here to do, is scientific development here. Um, but all jokes aside on this, like I'll show you why I like it. I don't operate in a bunch of IDEs. So I'm not going to give you nuanced details and which one's faster and a whole bunch of that stuff. I'm just going to tell you guys what I like about it. I'm going to compare it to two other ones. So Jupyter Notebook's really popular. Um, other people I've worked with use VS Code. I'll show you why it's great for software development. But again, it doesn't have what I need or what I want. So these are all my preferences and opinions here. Um, so let's start off with here by looking at a little bit of code. Um, we're going to import pandas and we're going to import matplotlib. So I'm going to run those real quick. Um, and then we're going to import some data here. So kind of scoot this over. You can see it is a CSV file. Um, we're going to use pandas. We're going to import that. And if you look at the variable explorer tab over here on the right, you see that all of a sudden CCAR popped up. So I had it on a different tab here, but if you rerun it, I'll show you. So if we rerun this real quick, we got to run our libraries again. All of a sudden it pops up. I can see it. So all of a sudden I know my data has been imported. Okay, so this is one feature I love about this. When I am working mathematically on, um, on tables or data sets here, data frames, arrays and all that, um, in my head, I already know what I'm going to do to it. And I need to know, like in my head, I know, oh, if I do this filter, it's going to reduce the size. So when you look up here in the upper right corner, you'll see that it has um, your data frame. It tells you the type that it's a data frame. It tells you the size. So this is 168 rows, 19 columns. And because I'm lazy and dumb, um, when there's small data sets, I want to see it real quick. I'll double click on it and open it up. And it has this amazing data set that looks just like Excel. Now, a big massive warning here. I've worked on a few different uh, operating systems with different processors, so ADM and Intel. Um, the rows and the column indexes here, they don't always align to the data here in itself. So you can't always trust this. Um, but this is just nice to look at. So here's some time series data. This is optimized for my computer. I don't move it around from a laptop to plugging it in and everything. So in the office, when I move my laptop onto my big screens, it, it has issues. It has issues. P Spider is free. It is not perfect. Um, but it gives you a kind of a heat map and shows you kind of ranges. So like 16.5 is quite large. It's sticking out because it's blue. And then we have red ones, which are negative. So on the other spectrum. But in general, you can kind of look at your data here. Now, again, if you wanted to, you could look at the head. You could look at the tail. Um, a I do that here so you know you can say you can print out head and again it'll print it on here it's ugly it wraps it doesn't do things stellarly um, I often instead of doing this and printing it and it doesn't show you all the rows and columns uh, quants work in large data sets so even printing anything isn't really valuable because you usually have so many columns um, so what I do is I just assign this to something new here so we'll call this new C car or I'll call it C car head or something uh, and I'll run it real quick and bam, you see in the right hand corner, I see the new one was created. I know the code operated. Um, I look at the size. So it is five rows now and 19 columns. So I am good quality wise. I know all of my columns are still there. Nothing got dropped. I double click it and you can actually look at it this way. So you can now look quickly and go, oh, okay. You know, like this data looks correct. Or I did something and I have this whole column of, you know, not a number, the NAN. So oh, I got a problem here. Uh, it is very visual. So I operate visually. I run code snippets. I have to ensure that it happens. Just because you don't have an error does not mean it operated correctly, especially when working with data. Um, another piece I was going to mention is like doing a filter here. So I'm not going to write any code, but let's say you were checking if, you know, variable A is going to be equal to, uh, I'll call it charge off. Um, there are other variants of this. So if I was right to write this code here, and I was looking for this in an if statement of some sort, so I mean, I'm not gonna write it, but if you had variables in there that were like labeled like this, so let me, I'll make these comments so it doesn't air out. Um, again, that's something else I like about this, right? It, it tells me something's wrong with my line of code like many other IDEs. And if you put your little mouse over it, it'll tell you like it's an undefined name. Like it doesn't know what I'm trying to do here, which is fine. 
Um, but if you were to type this with, you know, charge off where the capitalization is different and you did like a where statement and you're trying to filter some data down, uh, you're going to want to look at the top right corner here and see, did it go from 168 rows? And when it filtered out, did it go less than that? Right. This is where I visually check this as I'm operating to make sure my code is doing what I want. Because in this case, if everything in your data set is listed as charged off of the capital C um, and your code is listed with a lowercase c, it will not err. It just it didn't find anything, so it doesn't filter it here. So it's just another example of that. Um, plotting, I really like the plotting in here as well. I don't need a fancy plot and all that stuff. I hit F9, I run this real quick. And then you go over to the plot tab right here and it opens the plot up and I can make the plot just a little bit bigger um, by kind of adjusting my screen here. I can look at it. I can see exactly what it is. Um, there are other tabs on the right here as well, just like, you know, our studio and all that. There's a help tab. I think you can search things and whatnot. Uh, there's a files tab. I don't use this. I don't use the files tab. I don't use any of that. When I need a file, I go to the bottom left of my windows and I open up I went my tab and I know where my data is at here. So this is why I like uh, Spider because I can see the data. I can visually understand what's going on. I can make the corrections. I can make all these adjustments. Um, again, quants are most of the time here. So not quant dev, but actual quants doing research and model development. I'm scripting. I'm not really programming. I'm just scripting. I'm creating a process. I go through my data. I do processing and cleaning and I you know, do variable selection and I build a model and I do performance testing and I look at the residuals. It's all in this one code. And if you want, you can hit open and you can go in and you can open another file here, which I'll just hit new. So again, it has these nice easy buttons to open things and make new things. But at the top, it also stores uh, all your different files you have open. So if you're like me, chaotically at work, I have like 10 tabs open. Uh, but I can close them as well and they'll go away and you can save them and it's a regular file. So I like it. I like the fact that I can switch through the plots here. Um, if you plot out multiple things as well, so I'll note this. So let's say instead of real GDP growth, we do nominal and we plot this. Um, you'll see here that now it's a different plot. And now if I want to look at the previous plot, uh, on the right hand side here is a bar, I can click the chart above it and I can see it. And I can scroll through these. Uh, there's little arrows too you can use to go back and forth. Um, I like this. I like to be able to go back and forth between the charts because um, sometimes my code actually ends up doing this where I ran real GDP and like, that's not what I needed. That is completely wrong. I change the code itself. I don't write a new line and then I rerun it and I generate another plot. And then I go, oh crap, I needed to run the other one. And sometimes the code I ran to get to these plots have adjustments and corrections in this big stack of code. I don't want to rerun one. I want to find the old plot. And I can just, again, go up into the top right and you can see there's different plots. Um, there's also a trash can bin. You can hit the trash can bin and it will delete your, your charts real quick. You can go into the variables here. Uh, you can right click on them and you can delete them manually if you want, like remove. So you can remove it. Uh, if you just want to start over, like I wrote some code, I made some corrections in the middle. I don't know if it's going to run from beginning to end without errors. I want to test that. Uh, you can hit trash can, it'll remove everything. You go to the bottom window, hit control L, it'll erase all of your log. It still keeps the line number. So we start at 21 instead of one now. And then you can go back in and you can rerun uh, all of your code. Hit F9, that's what I use. And it reruns everything. My data comes back up, switch back over to my plots. And again, I only have the one plot because I only wrote the one piece of code. So this is why I like Spider. It is very intuitive, it's very easy to use. Now quickly here to do the same code um, in Jupyter Notebook real quick, which again, if you're not, if you don't know, uh, Jupyter Notebook again is part of Conde here. So they're working on the same kind of you know software. They're starting the same company here. But if we go into Jupyter Notebook and we create a new file here. So I'm, I don't use this a lot guys. So I'm sure there's all kinds of features in here. I, I don't know that are great and wonderful. I just don't use them. Um, I don't like that everything's in blocks. I don't understand why. Like maybe there's a purpose for this. Um, people argue it's very clean because you can have like charts and you can have like text and writing. Uh, no serious quant is putting um, like documentation, actual solid documentation in here. Um, they're, they're actually, you know, they're just, they're making notes. So like we saw in Spider here, if you wanted to do notes, which you should, uh, you just hit the, the hash sign here, Octothorpe. And you type in, you know, you know, this is a note. 
and you can put in as many notes as you want. Like this is what coding is for. It's good practice. Put in your notes. Um, people like this, they claim it makes this nice, pretty output and everything. When you're working with the business side often and validations and passing files with people that are not quants, um, it's easier to do everything in Microsoft Word, which is what we do documentation in, which I'll explain maybe in another video. Um, so yeah, this can make good charts, I guess. But one thing I don't like, I'll show you here. So you go in here and this is the block of code I wrote. I'm gonna import pandas, I have matplotlib. I've got this file I'm gonna import, I'm gonna hit run. And it ran, but I don't like that. I don't know what happened. Like people are gonna say, well, Dimitri, if you really understood Python, I understand that. But sometimes there's bugs, sometimes there's issues. I don't, like there's nowhere on the screen I can see the code. I don't even know if it imported. Um, again, there's no error, but it doesn't mean the code operated correctly here. Uh, we'll run this real quick. Again, I ran it, created a head, but there's nothing there. You've got to print things. And I understand, so if you're you know, yelling and screaming in the background, this is inefficient because I created a new data set and it's storing it now in memory. Uh, but you can print head or C car head here and it will print it out. But again, this is very, very inefficient. If you have, like I've had data sets with over a thousand variables. Okay, so I'm not gonna necessarily be looking at every row and column here, but if it's gonna print out everything, it's just this convoluted mess. I just want it to nicely go in the top right corner. And even often, so something else I'd share some of my secrets here. Often I export these to CSVs and I'll dig through them manually to look in CSV and Excel to find um, some sort of issue or double check things on quality. Because again, Spider's framework isn't great. You could do it with this as well. That's something else you can do. Um, but the other piece I don't like here too is like the plotting. So let's say you run this plot and I go, great, it looks beautiful. Everyone talks about how great the interface here looks. And it creates this great chart here. And it does, it looks great. It looks, I think the quality, the, the visual quality is 10 times better than spider. But for quants, I don't care. Like, it's just not, it's not important to me. I just need to be able to see the line. I mean, the, the line is obviously clear. Uh, I think it runs in like HTML. It, it's formatted beautifully. It looks great. I get it. But now if I go back in like I did before and I was like, oh, instead of real, you know, GDP growth, I want nominal. And then I rerun this real quick. The chart changes in that block, but it doesn't save it. I have to actually go down and say, okay, I'm going to save. I need to know that I need to save both charts, which I'm a quant. I'm scattered half the time. I don't know that I'm going to need to save them. You got to rerun it down here and you have to retype this in and you got to rerun it. Okay. Now, you think this isn't really that big of an issue, but it is for me because I don't like to rewrite things. Anyways, and so you don't think it's that big of an issue, but often I have a big set of code that's modifying uh, variables through like math and doing calculations or running some models and things. And then I need to refit the chart. I just love Spider that has the charts on the side because when I screw up, I can look real quick and I don't have to rerun things. It just stores everything and saves it. Now I'm sure that is not very efficient, for coding or whatnot, uh, but it works for me. I like it for quants. So Jupyter Notebooks, it's cool. I have employees that use it, they love it. Um, I don't really like it. I like to be able to see all of my charts, my data. Again, we don't see the data sets, we don't see the dimensions. Uh, if something runs amiss like this variable or my charge off rate, or my charge off, I'm looking for a match. If it doesn't match for some reason, I don't know in my code if it actually worked because I can't see like the number of rows decreased, for example. Uh, again, you have to write more of these checks. I've noticed too when employees use this, they have to print every single freaking thing out and it drives me nuts. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry guys, but it drives me nuts because you do, you have to print everything to see it to get an answer here. Uh, something else I didn't show you here is even when you do things like you add numbers together, so, you know, I don't know. So let's say A is equal to five plus seven. And I run this. Uh, it's going to come up here and tell me the type. It's an integer. And it's going to tell me the value on the right, which is 12. Okay, that's what A is. Uh, when I do things like, uh, I don't know, root mean squared error, for example, it just saves it often in here because I do the calculation. Uh, and it just gives me the number here. And I can actually just right click and I can copy this and I can put it right in my documentation and I'm done. Uh, whereas in Jupyter Notebook, like, you can do the same thing guys. it's the same. It's just different looking. Um, you can do the same piece here, but the difference is, is when you print this out and you have, so let's do a equals five plus seven and you run this, 
it just runs. And so then I got to go in here and say, okay, you know, uh, print a, and then it'll print a. So there are pros, there are cons. I know people like this. They think it's faster and it's easier and you can script quickly. I, I just don't like it. It's just a personal preference here. I'm just not used to dealing with this. It came from SAS. It came from MATLAB. It came from Excel. Like this is where I'm coming from. I'm not coming from the uh, programming side here. Now I had to, I had to Google visual basics here. So there's a little script running, someone showing some stuff, um, visual st or visual studio code. Uh, VS Code is awesome for, we have developers that use it, they love it. They've told me why it's great, wonderful. I'm like, I get it. Um, part of this too is like on the left-hand side, you can see all the different um, files they have, and, you know, JSONs and they've got their Docker hooked up. And you can see like node modules and the libraries and utilities and like, there's all this cool stuff in there, but I don't use it for what I do. So for me, it's not that great of a tool for what I do. Now, if I was doing the quant dev side and I'm trying to like sync things together and bring in data pipelines and make sure it's going out correctly and stuff like that, this might be awesome. This might be like the coolest tool ever. Um, again, it's similar though to what we're already using with other things. So, you know, it's color coded in here. You can do the black, black background as well. I try to find some other cool examples for you. Um, VS code rocks when it comes to actual, like developing software and applications and everything. Um, again, though, that's not what quants are doing. That's not what my channel is doing. It's just, it's just different. So that's why I prefer spider. If you guys are curious on why I'm going to use it, if you guys want to use uh, Jupyter notebook, awesome. Go for it. Just don't ask me questions. Cause I'm not going to know the details. Uh, VS code, same thing. Awesome. Software works great. I have employees that use it and love it as well. It's just not for me. Um, for model development, I like to see everything up in this upper right hand corner. Again, I use the variable explorer for all that. And then I use my charts here and I flip through my charts and look at things quickly. Again, the quality here is not great on the imaging. So you can see this picture is not stellar. Um, compared to this this beautiful picture in Jupyter Notebook. So anyways, that's the difference between Spider, Jupyter Notebook, and VS Code from a quant perspective. That is why I like to use Spider. Again, it's completely up to you guys. There are other IDEs out there as well, but I also find that using the whole Conda environment here and running it with Spider, things just seem to work smoother for me. I have less hiccups and issues and syncing things together. And we will talk about virtual environments and how to do all that in another video. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.